This is Bada, the back of beyond in Eritrea, one of the driest, the most hostile regions in the whole world, home to Denakil Depression, the world's hottest place. And ironically, this is where Homo sapiens are said to have evolved. If you are grumbling about temperatures in their 40s back home, spare a thought for Lance Nayak Rajesh Kyole keeping watch here in 54 degrees centigrade. This, the Denical Depression or the Bada area, is known as a point in the world where some of the highest temperatures have been recorded. Why should an Indian post be here? Well, Ethiopia, just beyond the horizon behind me, might one day be tempted, being landlocked, to make a swift, sharp bid towards the Red Sea. And that is what the Indians are supposed to prevent. The Indians are the largest contributor to this peacekeeping mission between Eritrea and Ethiopia, and the Indian contingent in Unmi consists of one battalion of 12 Maratha light infantry, one company of Maratha regiment, and one company of the Corps of Engineers. The Ethiopian Eritrean border, which witnessed a war last May, there is a cessation of hostilities agreement now. The temporary security zone, which is 25 kilometers in width, is spanning 900 odd kilometers of border. Colonel Shankar is in charge of the key sector of the temporary security zone, the 25 kilometer buffer zone between Eritrea and Ethiopia. This really is the heart of the matter. The goal of this mission is to ensure that the boundary between Eritrea and Ethiopia is de delineated and ratified by both the countries and they live in peace. Well, in some ways, the most important work has to be done uh, not here on the ground or by the United Nations, but by the Boundary Commission that has been established under the Algiers Agreement. Because really, our role is simply to maintain peace, maintain a buffer zone between the two armies, while the Boundary Commission adjudicates on the legitimate border. When two contestants argue about territory, where does a legitimate border lie, one that would satisfy both? Africa's regional body, the OAU, or the Organization of African Unity, says that all border conflicts in Africa will be resolved in favor of the boundaries they inherit from their colonial masters. The Eritrean argument is on similar lines. To return to the colonial boundary that was in force before Eritrea was incorporated into Ethiopia. This frontier was fixed in 1902 between the Italian government, which had colonized Eritrea, and the Ethiopian emperor, Menelik II. However, in the case of Eritrea and Ethiopia, the issue has become problematic as the old colonial boundary disappeared for several decades for a very simple reason. Eritrea was ruled as part of Ethiopia. Sophia Mariam fled to the United States in search of a better life. She escaped the conflict. With the arrival of Unmi and Eritrea, she has found the confidence to return home to her country simply an exercise in nostalgia, just to see whether she can help rebuild Eritrea. The Eritrean diaspora is very much involved with the country and does a whole lot for the country. Um, moral support, uh, uh, now we don't have any much resources, but whatever we can, we contribute. Um, we very much want to be involved with the country and uh, we truly believe that it is us Eritreans, no matter where we are, that will make Eritrea work. Like all wars, this one has left behind both emotional and physical scars. The Senafe Hospital in Eritrea now left with only a few walls standing. As one of Africa's poorest nations, Eritrea has been saddled with unaffordable war. It has cost tens of thousands of lives, a fractured economy, and a ruined infrastructure that will take years and years to rebuild. The burden of war has been worsened by drought and poverty. 
the fighting has displaced hundreds and thousands of people. Estimates say that almost 750,000 people have fled Eritrea. First, the war lasted 30 years, and now in this short burst of three years, the region has been devastated. And the return of the internally displaced persons in the temporary security zone will be one of the primary tasks of the Indian peacekeepers. This is a refugee camp in the temporary security zone. To be specific in UN parlance, it is called a camp for the internally displaced persons. Now these people from here have to go back to their villages. There are two obstacles. One is transport into their villages. And secondly, some of them would like to feel a little more secure about the boundaries and that there will be no further conflict before they start moving from here. Today, these men and women in this refugee camp can come back to some semblance of a normal life because of the Indian peacekeepers. The Indian battalion here has so far been successful in creating an atmosphere, an ambiance of calm and confidence. Life and civilization thrives even in the most unexpected places. Would you expect in this refugee camp in Bada a most delectable cup of coffee being served to you after a regular ritual, the coffee ceremony, in typical Eritrean style. And this lady Medina has been able to safeguard her smile despite the trying conditions in her country. And her coffee, grounded from fresh coffee seeds, is like an elixir for one and all. Among the many challenges that the Indians face on this mission is rebuilding infrastructure, building roads, bridges, devastated accommodations. Seven years back, I'm told where, where we have established a camp, there was a school where the uh, children from both the countries were studying. And this is one of those ironies of the war where this uh, bridge has been demolished and they can't cross over and they have not been allowed to cross over to this side of this, uh, the, uh, on the other side of the border. This bridge between Eritrea and Ethiopia was blown up during the war. Now it has fallen to the Lord of Indian Corps of Engineers who are busy putting this bridge together. A group of 30 Indians are busy round the clock working day and night on this project. We have maintained uh, up till now more than 300 kilometers of road main connection routes and uh, Barantu being the sector headquarter and the uh, core area in this sector uh, we have made like you have just landed on this helipad there is the only helipad in Barantu which has been made and built by Indian engineers the core of engineers and uh, as you can see it's very well done and, uh, and we are working on one more helipad. As the sector headquarters a number of flights come into Barantu since this is one of the busiest sectors in Eritrea this helipad was a very vital and a necessary construction. This is one of the schools in which Eritrean and Ethiopian children once studied together. But those were happier times. It is an irony of the war. The school has now become the barracks for a section of the Indian soldiers. Meanwhile, in enemy territory, in Ethiopia, the Indians are busy in a different kind of construction work. I'm now in Ethiopia, in Adigrat to be specific. And all that activity behind me is offices being erected for the company commander for the 12th Maratha Light. This is where it is going to be headquartered. Indians have to cope with very high profile competition like the one offered by Sher Brig with its sophisticated equipment. But even though there's very little razzmatazz to characterize the Indian presence here, they have won everyone's heart with their dedication and sincerity. First we thought we'll go ahead and establish our uh, officers mess complex and the office complex because this is the place which people will generally come in first. And this place should convey our culture and also the our uh, Indian Army's tradition as such. So what we decided, go ahead. 
in 48 hours, we established the existing mess. All these people who were invited for the evening uh, you know, housewarming party, I would call it, they had seen this ground and also the area. So when they came, naturally they were surprised. They were shocked, I would say. This thing could have happened in last, uh, within a week or so. And when they came in and inside the mess and the Indian way of establishing the thing, uh, something, uh, I would say they're flabbergasted, in fact. Uh. We have um, Indian staff officers here in the brigade staff. I'm very happy with their contribution. A, the staff officers are very professional, well-educated and well-trained. There is another reason why the Indian contingent in Unmi is gaining in popularity in Asmara. They have come here armed with all the cultural accoutrements. There is the routine fire drill. The traditional exercise regimen, Malkam, made famous by Shivaji. And besides all this, they have carried with them the faith of prayer. In all hopes, this mission would be a success where the Indian troops would have contributed in a large measure to the succession, success of this mission.